A recent report from the Rapid says that while numbers of people riding the bus were down a little last year, one route has experienced incredible growth. In fact, the report says the ridership on the GVSU connector, Route 50, has increased over 800% in a 10-year period. Because of this demand for a fast connector between GVSU's Allendale and Pew campuses, a new route is being proposed. It's called the Laker Line. We went into this project knowing that we were pursuing bus rapid transit um, as opposed to you know, light rail, things like this. We knew that uh, the way that bus rapid transit operates um, with a combination of these elements that make the trip five minutes faster between Allendale and downtown Grand Rapids. According to the plan, one of the ideas to make the Laker Line faster is level platform boarding. These platforms will have snowmelt technology and security cameras. Planners hope both these technologies will increase safety. Buses will also include technology that allows them to communicate with traffic signals. Lights will stay green when a traffic signal detects a Laker Line bus approaching. A technology-laden plan like this won't be cheap. Projects under $100 million nationwide and into a, and it's an evaluation metric of, um, you know, supplying all of the documentation on all of your findings with not only your planning phase but your environmental, uh, and all of these metrics are then evaluated to determine your rating. If you have a good rating, you're going to most likely be recommended for funding for this cost of your project. The Laker Line project was funded because it was very cost effective. Still, the total cost of the project is $72 million. Planners say that the Laker Line will cost the Rapid more to run, but the bus capacity will practically double, increasing effective ridership. The project was approved in the Congressional Budget for fiscal year 2017. Now the project is waiting for the grant money to be released. We're excited to continue to work with the community and the adjacent properties to really kind of tie in um, the landscaping to really encourage that kind of place making that these stations can also provide. Um, but very supportive uh, in the community, a lot of public support, uh, a lot of uh, you know all the different stakeholders, impacted institutions, businesses. GVSU is obviously very supportive. MDOT, City of Grand Rapids, Walker, Standale DDA. You know the downtown uh, Grand Rapids. Rapids, Inc. So what is the difference between Route 50 and the Laker Line? Currently, Route 50 operates as a fixed route rather than a bus ride transit. Route 50 also operates without some of the new Laker Line technology. According to LakerLine.org, the new buses will be 60 feet long, accordion style, with the ability to carry 90 passengers and have three doors for an easier entrance and exit. The Laker Line will also have Wi-Fi to create a student-friendly experience. Some stops will be removed, but some will be added to streamline the bus rapid transit for quicker transportation times. The Laker Line will also connect with the existing Silver Line route. For some people, like John Rothwell, the new Laker Line may offer some relief to commuters. I just can't find a place to park along it, so I'm forced to pay a parking pass, because by the time I get to the Walker Station, it's full and they're ticketing cars because some neighbor on Kinney's upset and the neighbors on Kinney Street voted down the expansion of the parking lot that Grand Valley wanted to put in there so it affects their not my backyard attitude affects a lot of Grand Valley students. Rothwell says he thinks the Rapid should expand services more. Extending weekend services too on some of the routes is, is something more. Um, as the city of Grand Rapids expands uh, buildings, uh, restaurants, bars, apartment complexes are going up more and more and the city is also waiving parking requirements. So a building that may need 80 parking spaces is getting by with six or seven. and. The excuse is, well, we've got public transportation, take the bus, but the bus may not go there after 6 o'clock on a Saturday night and no Sunday service at all. The Rapid says they are not just making the Rapid faster, they are improving the quality of the ride for regular users. From a cultural standpoint, I think seeing and feeling the experience of the difference between BRT and fixed route, I think will benefit the culture of, of transit ridership for the students throughout the rest of their futures and the rest of their careers. Um, again, I, you know, I use that analogy of it's you know going from from coach class to first class, um, but but understanding the value that this level of investment has on the experience 
experience of a rider, I think can capture more of a cultural acceptance that transit isn't just because I don't have a car. Transit's not for people that can't afford cars. Transit's not, and transit's about sustainable mobility so we can do better things with building our city and so forth. The Rapid will be receiving the new Laker Line buses and facility to accommodate this new style of buses in the summer of 2019. The Rapid says the Laker Line hopes to be up and running in May 2020. So that gives us some time to do some testing, to get operator and mechanical training, uh, and then especially throughout the course of the winter, really kind of test the vehicles, especially on Michigan Hill. We can really test some of the turning movements and, and just to ensure that when we're ready to start out revenue operations in May. Everything's ship shape, tip top, um, all the bugs are worked out. Monios went to GVSU as an undergrad and graduate student. He likes to think the Laker line is a bit like his Laker effect, the GVSU slogan that encourages students to positively impact their community. You know, it's exciting to sort of be a part of that legacy. He clearly believes the Laker line will have a positive impact on the Grand Rapids community. Reporting from Grand Rapids, I'm Natalie Longroy.